Welcome back to the channel. It's come to my attention that there's quite a few of you that are new here. One of the most requested things I get is doing essentially a build breakdown. So, here we go. I picked up this 1999 Lincoln Town Car Signature Series in, uh, I want to say it was early 2020 or late 2019. And uh, bought it as just a commuter. Uh, was stocking up turbo parts because I was going to throw a uh, Cummins turbo on my old Expedition that I had. But the town car seemed like a more viable candidate, so I went down that rabbit hole. Built a custom turbo kit utilizing the turbo off of a 0559 Cummins. And uh, we had a little bit of fun with it. We took it all the way to Wisconsin, brought it back, turned it up from 8 pounds to like 12 pounds, and that ensued us going through three motors. So then... We decided to build a 4.6 that was capable of handling some boost. Bought another non-PI 4.6, stripped it down, had the crank polished, had the block board 20 over, bought a set of manly rods and pistons forged, had the rotating assembly balanced, and uh, got a set of ARP main studs and head studs. As far as heads go, I picked up a set of PI heads from a buddy of mine who used to run a Crown Vic up at NMD on nitrous. So we went through those, um, replaced the cam followers, new valve, upgraded valve springs. A good friend of mine, Mark Cole, did a little bit of just cleaning up of the ports and the combustion chambers, nothing crazy, no CNC or polish or nothing like that, just getting rid of some slag and a little bit of gasket matching and that's pretty much it it's got stock pi cams it's got uh Chloe's timing kit in it with uh the cast timing tensioners i don't trust the plastic tensioners but other than that it's factory equipment guys you know ford pi intake that's it as far as the long block goes uh fuel system which was the achilles heel of this thing in 2020 i went above and beyond uh, we have a Fuel Lab Prodigy 2 spur gear pump capable of supporting, four, I think it was like 12 or 1400 horsepower, way more than we're ever going to make with this motor. Um, that has a continuous mode and a high mode. Those that have been following along in the recent videos will realize or will know we are in the process of wiring the Holly to command the fuel pump to high mode over 15 psi boost um it's got an evil bay it's supposed to be a 20 gallon fuel cell i call it like a 15 with a couple gallon reserve dash 10 an feed line going up to a y up to the rails coming out of the rails to a magna flow or magna fuel excuse me boost reference fuel pressure regulator it then from there is a dash eight return line back to the pump or back to the fuel cell a set of ebay billet fuel rails a set of fuel injector clinic thousand cc fuel injectors uh it's got an on three blow off valve and a 76 millimeter on three turbo <laughs> turbo kit was built by yours truly um i got all of the hardware as far as v-bands and clamps that stuff all came from a website called siliconeintake.com all of the mandrel bent exhaust pipe i ordered from speedway and 
and let's see, cold side is three and a half inch aluminum universal intercooler piping kit off eBay, except for the actual charge pipe that goes to the throttle body. That is three and a half inch mild or three inch mild steel because I don't have an aluminum welder and I've not dabbled much in aluminum welding yet. I'm sure I'm forgetting stuff. VMS blow off elves or not blow off elves. VMS Racing wastegates, or VS Racing, not VMS. VMS is the wheels I have. VS Racing is the company that I got the wastegates from. I have one per bank, trying to make sure we have good boost control. The intercooler also came from siliconeintake.com, and my tuner still says I have way more intercooler than necessary, but that means good intake air temps, so whatever. I'm not going to put a smaller one on. As far as the headers go, that is a hodgepodge. I ordered a set of shorty headers for an SN95 Mustang with a 4.6. I think I was able to use one of them because I'm essentially flipping them upside down so that way they're facing forward. I can't remember which is which, which one is for an SN95, but then I ordered another set after just visually window shopping on ebay for uh 97 f-150 and i was able to make them work um in a perfect world if i had my own garage i would very much rather buy a set of exhaust flanges and build a set of headers which might happen in eventually but for now i really can't complain um they worked i have less than 250 75 dollars into both sets of headers because they came off of ebay now they're not great we had to do quite the modifications to even get a bolt into one of the holes that is also in a video on the channel you should you should watch it that was when we pulled the motor out at the beginning of this year to do kind of a wellness check and to deal with that that header it was a pain in the rectum as far as transmission goes it's still a 4r70w uh, jury belt transmissions went through. There's some Sonex hardened parts in there. It's uh, got a Transco uh, manual or that did that Transco valve body kit, turning it into essentially a four speed manual without a clutch, pretty much. Um, fourth gear and lockup are ground controlled, and they are controlled via switches. Um, I, it's all manual. Not, the Holly controls nothing dealing with the transmission. It has uh, been converted to, uh, instead of electric pressure regulated, it is essentially mechanical. It's vacuum driven now. Um, also, all this, everything I'm covering is in a video somewhere between 2021 and 2023. Because that's when this thing got build process, initially got it started last year and then this year. Um, rear end is still stock 8.8. It's got a Mustang locker in it that is in dire need of some love. Uh, we put a set of 331 gears in it this year, switching it up, and new clutches and steels with the spiders. Did not look great, and I didn't spend the money to get new ones yet, so probably riding on borrowed time there. We had gone ahead and built the cage on account of the drag and drive we did earlier in the year. Drop the hammer, follows NHRA rules and regulations, and if you're running faster than I think it's 1150 or 1130 and your car is older than an 05, you need to at least have a roll bar, so... This thing runs 1130s, 1120s, depending on the temperature on 18, 19 pounds. So we'll put a cage in it. It kind of sucks because it mutilated my door panel. Thanks, brother. But yeah, that's kind of... I think that's it. That's, that's the sauce, man. If you're wondering what it took to get a 4,000-pound town car to run low 11s, faster than most of your modern muscle cars off the lot. Um, if I had to ballpark a total as to what I got into this car, we're still under, I want to say we're still under 20K 
I think we're somewhere around the, I'd say thirteen to fifteen thousand dollars, and that's including everything, fluids, you know, gaskets, bearings. Any time that I've had to take this thing apart, put it back together, it's still cheaper than going and buying one off the lot. And the gratitude or the gratification from knowing you built something that's faster than something somebody just went out and bought. Um, that's, that's it, man. That's kind of the whole Badger built purpose, if you will, on YouTube is if we can get a handful of people to realize, hey, you know, just because I've never done it before or don't know doesn't mean you can't do the research and doesn't mean you can't do it. There's going to be trials and tribulations along the way. I learned the hard way. That's why I went through three stock motors before actually doing enough research to realize I needed to upgrade parts of the fuel system I didn't initially. I needed to do an aftermarket standalone ECU because trying to doctor up one from 1999 was just re... It, it, it didn't work. It didn't work. It, it wasn't It wasn't like it. So, um, I can say, you know... Spend the money in the areas that absolutely are necessary. If that means it takes you a year or two, so be it. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. But I promise you, you will not regret it. Especially if you're like me, going from never having a turbo car in your life to then building one. It's absolutely amazing. You will not regret it. So, that's kind of my uh, crude, well over 10 minute how to build breakdown this is what we did this is what what we got that's it mm. shifter is a winner's sidewinder designed for a 4r70 w i think i got it off of some bronco website or something apparently they use these transmissions quite a bit in the aftermarket world for as far as ford shit goes so but yeah now i think that's it if you guys want me to do a more elaborate breakdown on the car itself, I mean, I guess there's really not too much to cover. It's got cut coil springs in the front. It's got Crown Vic lowering springs in the rear and Metco billet aluminum rear control arms. Stock shocks from 1999 that are blown out. We gotta revisit. We gotta visit that soon. So, but anyway, till next time, guys. Oh, <laughs>